So I will speak about storytelling. And I guess there is nothing more delightful and exciting in human communication as listening and telling stories. It's my assumption. I think um, since the beginning of times, people found language and as they started to speak, they began to tell stories to each other. So, and this continues to these days, as we see with millions of books and movies and everything that there is in images, as well as in words and combined, of course. So when I started um, uh, filming or thinking about making movies, um, that was because I had the passion to tell stories, specific stories, in, in my case, um, in the area of music, because I came from the piano and um, also in different worlds, because I emigrated from Russia to, to Germany, to America, back to Germany and so forth. So I took um, everything that my life brought to me to tell my stories. I guess then the stories become more authentic and more genuine because they are really embedded in oneself and in one's nature. Um, <clears throat> I think there are more people who like to listen to stories than to tell stories, maybe. <laughs> maybe not, but um, for example, if somebody wants to have a company, I guess they also need to tell their story. And um, in order to tell the story, one has to come up with ingredients that will make the story exciting and um, make the listener um, curious and hold him for a while, listening and also remembering the story afterwards. Um, in my first film, I found myself doing probably something very uh, natural in storytelling, which is um, a structure that's called um, in filmmaking crisis structure. And crisis structure means that, let's say, for example, there is a person running for a Congress seat in American Congress. And during the course of the story, we will tell whether the person will be elected or not. So what happens in this story is actually very clear. There is a time when this uh, story begins. The person wants to be elected. We have all the circumstances. Why? When? Where? And there is the goal. The final goal is to reach this successful moment. However, what is also exciting is the question, will it be the success or not? And if it's not going to be a success, it's kind of also exciting in, this, uh, in a way because it will be seen how this person will deal with this sad, tragic moment. So <clears throat> the audience will follow the whole time and probably somehow identify or more or less identify themselves or not with this story because everybody in their life has a goal that they want to reach and ultimately, hopefully, to um, succeed in, in some way or another. Um, so this is an ingredient I think that's very key to every story one tells is the suspense. The question undeniably has to, to put themselves into the situation and say, will it happen or not? Very simple, but um, I think a very 
interesting principle in telling a story. So, um, if for example, somebody, if you want to found a company, there is obviously this possibility of telling a suspense story in the sense of you have something to offer, a service or a product, and the question is, are you going to be able to put it into the market? There is already somewhat of a um, story there. Then, of course, there is the question, how are you going to put it into the market? So, this is up to your fantasy. You can do marketing, you can do press, you can de uh, design beautiful um, folders and make up artwork for the product and so forth. So, this is how you are going to put it. And just to make a parallel for or an analogy um, into business making. And when you start to tell a story, let's now I'm out of the company, out of the business again, um, there are certain structural um, moments that are key to telling the story. So first of all, you have to ask yourself, who are the players? So who? The next question would be, when does it take place? Um, historically, nowadays, tomorrow, um, where? Anywhere in the world, somewhere outside of our world and so forth. Um, and why? So everybody has to be able to relate somehow why the story is relevant to be told. Um, sometimes it's um, in, in very modern narrative structures, you can also be confused for a while. And, but there is something, maybe, for example, music, that still will keep you uh, listening. Even though you're completely confused, there is music, and this music somehow motivates you to go on with that story, although you have no idea what's being told. I think for, <coughs> for a company, this might be difficult <laughs> to tell a story where you have no idea what, what is going on. It's too abstract. So I think um, there comes the next um, point where it's very important that the story is clear. Clear in its narrative that there is some logical connection that the listener can have um, an explained, explain while the story is going on because it's also not so easy. You have to, on one hand, follow the new things that are being offered. At the same time, you have to connect, associate, um, make your own comparisons. How does it relate to things you know? Or is it completely something you don't know, but somewhere you need to follow? So, in a way, the tempo of the story is um, very interesting because it f the tempo keeps the listener either listening or relaxing a bit or going forward, catapulting him into something completely he doesn't expect, which everybody loves, or making a little sideline, telling a little joke, let's say, which relaxes again. And there is, like in music, um, also this, there are moments of suspense and moments of relaxation. Anyway, when you design a story, it's wonderful to have an image to ground you in this image. And you can venture, like in the shape of a star, away from, from this image. And, still always be pulled back into it so that, that there is a clarity, you belong there, there is a certain center. Um, it's very helpful to collect different pictures that one can just put on a storyboard or um, on a planning board to put, um, to have always something that is a, li a little impulse for the fantasy. So you see the images and you know 
there are points, like key points, associative words that can be um, written below the image, let's say, so that you will have already a certain structure which is very helpful for your next steps. So the more you collect, the more you need to put your collection into some sort of order that will either help you or inspire you. <clears throat> you can take images and then reverse them and then suddenly your story becomes somewhat um, backwards, but maybe it's even more interesting. So your own story may surprise you at some points because you can play with it. And I think this is very important. Um, for example, in filmmaking, you write a, a story, you write a synopsis or treatment and screenplay, and then you start filming at some point, hopefully. And um, when you have all your material, you are sitting at the cutting table and suddenly there is the story that you have been writ uh, writing, but the material speaks to you suddenly. There are all these little things that are what ifs. So, what if can be um, a moment of flexibility which might lead you maybe to a more interesting story suddenly, surprise you completely and then you start your thinking process anew. So I think while telling the story you can adjust. I think for yourself as an author it's also very exciting because you suddenly change perspectives. You had one player who was incredibly one figure who was even your your leading figure, this is how the story started out. And um, suddenly you hear that the audience seems to be, or like the first time you tell your pitch with your story, is much more interested in your other <coughs> figure and you might put, shift your balance even to the other person. You, you wouldn't expect that you would have done it in, in the very beginning. So you start suddenly to have a second strand. Let's say you have a planning board, so you put one story on the top, then you have this other possibility that goes underneath, and then somehow, maybe you have a third even variation on the theme, and at some point you will see what's pulling stronger. And you can destill it, so you can have parallel developments, you can, you can see which one is, um, is more, is um, better for the story in terms of really pulling it. And the other things are not necessarily unimportant, they might also be interesting sidelines and I think it's always good to have a, to have not only one story, at some point it probably it is the easiest, but there are multi-leveled, there are several facets to it. Let's say again, it's, um, you, you film a, a dancer who is waiting for their premiere, but there is also a whole life in the theater at the same time happening, and there are all these interesting facets, so if I show some other dancers who have completely different conversations or who have other expectations for themselves, it might make the story um, fuller, more exciting, less two-dimensional, three-dimensional, because you can truly show a whole cosmos and not only one storyline, which sometimes will be a little bit limited. These two, these two elements or pillars are very important. On one hand, the wonderful preparation. On the other hand, a certain improvisation. And I think combined, it will evolve into something that has this wow. <laughs> and um, I guess every audience, every listener is somehow hoping that there will be this moment of revelation or insight or something that they haven't heard in their life, so um, they would be not only 
hear something that they can relate to, but also enriched in a way that um, will give them something unforgettable.